guacamole taco, the taqueria in the west side ghetto where I worked, I was suddenly sent back to the side of my sister at 12, kneeling at the kitchen counter of our parents' home. She sat, scooping green slivers of avocado from out of their broken skins. Anxious and small, I would squeeze the round limes, put their juicy pulp to my tongue, cut out my greedy little fingers to finely dice pit piles of tomatoes, onions, and peppers, hoping to be the one to mash them all together in the end. My sister and I were not trying to start a dialogue. We were not trying to be politically correct. We were not trying to bridge the gap. Looking out the restaurant's windows, I see construction workers drill away in Ogden, reminding me that white folks usually don't come here, unless they're drug users, missionaries, or doctors, soon cruising away seemingly undisturbed in their shiny cars. Some days I adopt the same looks of suspicion and surprise when I see one of these outsiders walking awkwardly around the neighborhood. I wonder what they're doing here. Glance at my own wrist and realized the hypocrisy of my question, knowing that ever since I was small, I was supposed to have a color in America, which is neither black nor white. I'm not a chameleon, although sometimes I do that I think that I've tried to be. I'm struggling to reason what we have in common, what it could be worth tearing away in ancient Asian histories to build a unified front of today's Asian American society. I dream of a cocky Asian nationalism when sisters wear cheap house and kimonos and our hair in those seriously funky, gravity defined dues every single day. When we have melded all of our languages into one to recall us to our values and our pride. When we have a voting block and boycott power not to be screwed with. When our music settled to the buck wild backs of Asian rhythms is blared out open street windows. When somebody could say, hey, quit acting so yellow. And we both understand what that could possibly mean. When we can belong to something and it, it, it can belong to us. When we are proud of our accents knowing, yes, this is what American English sounds like too. When screaming out yellow and brown power could encompass all of the stories of war-torn refugees from Vietnam, Cambodia, Sri Lanka, of my parents who were lured here by the brain drain, of the Japanese, of the Japanese Nisei and Ise in the American internment camps, of the Filipinos who first came to, to the dirty south in the mid-1700s, of the Chinese who drove the stakes into the railroads and worked alongside black sharecroppers in Mississippi, a nationalism with the weight of all of these things and more marking the day when my family will quit saying American, when we mean white, when we will have chucked out our own sense of eternal foreignness, when we can envision the face of America as ourselves. But my life has never been that clear, that pure, that unwavering. Listen to hip hop, I press skip past the tracks as my identity is fun as ball busting going through masters or stingy Korean grocery store owners. I wonder now which of my childhood friends realize that race consciousness isn't optional for everyone. I find the same values for family amongst Latinos, the same sense of guilt shared amongst Catholics and Jews, the same sense of insignificance shared with Native Americans and Arab Americans. If anyone were to ask me what is my community, it will be a complicated answer coming from the lips of a child of immigrants who thought to simply exist in America was to succeed. <coughs> Eating a guacamole taco at a taqueria in the west side ghetto where I worked, I thought of my sister scooping and slicing vegetables. I thought of all of this. I thought of all the kids do when left to their own devices, how there were so few boundaries for us. How we found joy in it. How something as odd as two Taiwanese girls making guacamole in the Chicago suburbs during the mid-1980s tells the story of the creeping of contacts and contexts, cultures and colors, finding homes in the foundations of our minds, creating the rituals of the community of us. Thank you all so much.